How do you choose rosé wine? I've got four different styles of rosé. I'm going to break them down so you understand what you're buying. That's all coming up. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel, and today we're talking about rosé all day. When I first started drinking wine, you would never find me buying or drinking rosé. I never thought it was serious wines, but as my palate's been changing throughout the years, I've been drinking and enjoying a lot more rosé. I think it's incredibly food-friendly, and it's great when it's hot out. You don't always want to be drinking big red wine. You want something a little bit more refreshing. Rosé can offer that, and it's not just a poolside summer sipper. There are some more complex rosés, as we're going to get into today. I don't live in Southeast Asia anymore, but if I was living back there again, I think I would drink a lot more rosé, especially with the spicy street food when it's hot and humid outside, I think it would be really refreshing and it'd go really well with the food. But you live and you learn, right? I should have been drinking more rosé back then. <laughs> Before we even get started, I'll have to hear what kind of rosé you're drinking. Drop it in the comments below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. All right, let's get into the four different styles of rosé. First, we have sparkling rosé. This is not champagne, but it's made in the champagne method. This is the testament. Apollo, this is the sparkling rosé, method classical, made in the champagne method, non-vintage. You know, champagne is the only region in Europe where you can actually blend red and white wines to make a rosé. Throughout the rest of Europe, that's not allowed. They, they say it's deceiving to the customer. So a lot of, that confuses a lot of people. Most rosés you can see are made from red grapes that's why you get the color it's so amazing how what happens during your wine journey like i said i used to poo poo on rosé a lot my palate's evolving i'm drinking a lot more rosé sparkling is a category that i've yet to really get into when it comes to champagne i'd rather i'd much rather drink white champagne than rosé although i know there's some brilliant ones out there i hope this doesn't explode on me this is from croatia dalmatia croatia this is made from the grape babic local red grape with tremendous potential. Uh, I don't know too many people that are making a sparkling wine out of Babic, so I'm excited about this. Babic usually makes red, red wines that have a little bit more color, a little more deeper. Uh, you want to age them in, in wood a little bit. Let's see if how this is, though. <laughs> don't explode on me. Don't explode on me. Don't explode on me. Yes. Because of the popularity of rosé and sparkling wine, the region of Prosecco now announced that rosé Prosecco is legal. I haven't tasted any yet. I've heard a lot of bad things from my fellow uh, wine geeks, but I'm sure it's going to be extremely popular. Let's get into this. Nice fine bead of bubbles. This is more like an uh, orange salmon type color, not necessarily a pink color. Let's give it a smell here. It smells pretty good. It smells like tangerine, a little bit of white peach type deal, maybe a little bit of strawberry. Mm, not bad. So this is made in the champagne method. It's more of a serious uh, rosé sparkling wine, not just something fun and fruity. You get some yeasty characteristics. I'm actually really impressed with it. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. I wanted to poo-poo on this wine. Maybe I'm going to change my mind a little bit about uh, rosé rose bubbles. So the first style's checked off. Sparkling rosé. Yes, I, I, I approve. The meat of this show are these next three champagnes, the champagnes that most people are drinking. The first is crushed rosé, and this one is from the south of France. In the wine world, most people want to copy Provencal rosé from the south of France, and there's for good reason. They're fantastic at making it. What happens is the red grapes picked a little bit earlier. They're grapes that are picked specifically for rosé. They're crushed, fermented, made into wine. If you talk to a lot of winemakers, they'll tell you that actually rosé is one of the more difficult wines to make because you have to protect the juice after you you crush the grapes, make sure they don't become oxidized. This is the Vignerons Catalans, cooperative in the Roussillon. This is the Saver, oh, my French is terrible, Saver de Etrefort <laughs> Gris 2020. Nice and fresh. As you can see, I've had some of this already. This is Grenache Gris. I think that for me, I don't under, for me, the south of France, when you make, you have these lighter style rosés, they're always the best because you have those Rome grapes, the Grenache, the Morvedra, the Syrah. They, I, it adds a little bit more complexity just than just a fruity rosé. They become a little bit more interesting, so to speak. Provence, because it's so popular, the rosés can be a little bit more expensive. If you're looking to find value, I would go right over to the next region, to the Languedoc Roussillon. Uh, Roussillon, like this this wine, I think, is five or six euros in Europe. Uh, one region that I really highly recommend is Corbier in the Languedoc. Those wines, I think, are tremendous, just as good as Provence rosé to me, and they're at very low prices. I think in Europe, we're looking at five, six euros by the time they're in the U.S., maybe 10 to 14 bucks. This is a typical still rosé to me. A lot of strawberry, a lot of watermelon, uh, a little bit of creamsicle type, like those strawberry creamsicle type flavors. 
when it's made out of these Rowan grapes, you get a little bit of sagey note too, which I absolutely enjoy. So it's just a touch of complexity. This wines are just delicious. It's crisp, it's fruity, it's yummy. I don't think anybody's gonna come complain when you're spending five, six euros on this. It can go great with a variety of foods. It's starting to get a little bit warmer out. If my US passport can make it back to the south of France this year, I would be more than happy sitting out on a patio drinking this type of wine. And this is the type of rosé that most people are going to drink. And don't be ashamed of that. If you like it, if it's good, go ahead and drink it up. Rosé sales like sparkling are just booming, especially in the US and around the world. I'm start, just starting to get more into rosé. I'm not an expert. My friend is actually Elizabeth Gabe, master of wine. She wrote a book about rosé. I'll put that in the description box and right up there. You should check her out. She really knows what she's talking about. The next style of rosé is Sanye rosé. And that's a little tip. If you just want to say cool, ask if the rosé is made in a Sanye method. Make sure it's a French term. It's basically a bleed rosé. What that means is they take the grapes, the fruit they want to make for the red wine just after they crush it. They bleed off, they drain off a little bit of juice to make this rosé. What that does is it concentrates the red wine that's in the tank so it can be a little bit stronger, and more high alcohol, and more high in flavor, and then it gives you rosé as well. And sometimes the rosés will have a little color too. This is the Fotoria della Aiola. This is the Rosato della Aiola, 100% Sangiovese from Tuscany. As you can see, there's a little bit more color here. Generally, Rosato in Italy means deeper colored rosés. And the rosés I like, so sometimes they have a little bit of tannin. Some of my favorite rosatos are from Puglia, especially Salento in the south of Italy, made from Negro Amaro. You need to check those wines out. They have a little more tannin. They have these nice tangerine peel type flavors. Really Really fun wines, you can do a lot of them, pair them with almost anything. Traditionally, the country of Cyprus also makes deeper colored rosés, I like those as well. I have a friend actually, a wine writing friend, that he says that he doesn't think Sangiovese is a great grape for rosé, actually. Let's give this one a smell. So in these deeper color rosatos, you're gonna get more, instead of a lighter strawberry, more of a ripe strawberry type flavor, and I also get some tangerine or some blood orange type flavors that also might come from the Sangiovese. Yeah, for me, just riper strawberry, tangerine, almost like a, a, a sweet lemony orange, like Jolly Rancher type of flavor. That's what it smells like. These are all dry wines. This does smell like it would be a little bit sweeter. Let's give this a go here. Significantly bigger in body than the one from the Roussillon. The one from Roussillon is, is almost like skim milk compared to the Aola, is or, or like a, almost like a whole milk. That's the difference in mouthfeel. I like this. There's a little bit of tan in there. It just kind of grips the palate a little bit. It doesn't dry out your mouth, but really adds a little bit of flavor. I really like this. I love rosatos. I love deeper colored rosés. Unfortunately, they're falling out of fashion. Most people, most general consumers want to drink the light style of rosé because it's easier to drink. It's just fruity crisp. You don't have to think there's more complexity here. They say it's gastronomic rosé. <laughs> but unfortunately, fewer producers make these types of rosés because they're difficult to sell. But I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, Iola, actually. Nice job. <laughs> The next category we have are the more serious, more ambitious rosés. These are rosés that are going to, we're looking at least 20 euros here in Europe, sometimes above 25, 30 bucks in the U.S. You know, Gerard Bertrand in uh, the south of France just released a rosé, the Clos de Temple. That's 190 euros. So we're talking a little bit over 210 U.S. dollars. I don't know if I'm ready to spend that on a rosé, but, you know, the market's out there. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie's property, I think they make a rosé that's about 90 euros so about a hundred bucks i don't know if i'm ready to pay that for rosé but hey whatever this one is from etna this is the dana fugata su volcano etna rosato 2020 narello mascalese is the grape some of the most exciting rosés that i've had in recent year are from etna a little more pricey we're talking about 20 around 20 euros so if you find the us we're talking maybe even up to 30 bucks for this type of wine this is the more premium rosé i really like it etna volcanic soil etna the most active volcano in europe sticks out in sicily like a sore thumb you look up at it while you're tasting wine you see the volcano smoking it's just a magical experience Let's give this a go here. This, you definitely, is more intense on the nose than all any of these rosés we had. You definitely smell the more seriousness out of this. And what I like about this, it's not fruit-driven, like, like these other three. It's more mineral-driven. I'm getting a lot of slate, a lot of mineral-type flavors, like flinty-type notes, with just a touch of lemon and maybe a little bit of tangerine, a little bit of lime spritzed in there. Interesting stuff. Ooh, I like it. 
A lot like some of the good Etna rosés that I've had. I like stuffing your mouth with a bunch of crushed rocks, flint, and then maybe squeezing a little bit of lime, a little bit of tangerine, so you get that zestiness in there. That's what you're going to get with this wine. Long finish. Really nice wine. I, you know, I have to retaste these wines, but this is the type of wine I definitely think would give give above 90 points, especially from a rosé. It's impressive. Not everybody's willing to spend, you know, 20 euros, 30 US, uh, up to 30 US dollars for a bottle of rosé, but I think this is really good. Super food friendly as well. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. I really like it. Four different rosés you can choose from. A sparkling, crushed rosé from the south of France, a Sagné rosé, rosato actually from Italy, and then more higher class, more higher end rosés. A rosé is not just a singular wine. There's a lot of different styles. There are some excellent wines to be had out there. So it's worth checking out, both for newbies and for us hardcore wine Greeks that like to put our nose up at rosé. Like I said, my mind has been changing a little bit lately. What kind of rosés do you like? And how much do you want to spend per bottle on a rosé? Drop it in the comments below. And you know what? I'll see you at the next episode. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.